Hi guys, welcome to Nick's Knits Podcast. I'm Nick, also known as Knicks Knits on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also find me on our Ravelry group at Nick's Knits Podcast, and you can join there to find all the show notes, watch the videos, and find out about giveaways and cows. Um, and you can also look at the blog and podcast at Um so yeah, you first of all, I might look a little bit different today because I'm just coming from my play. Um, because of the snow yesterday, we um, postponed the show to today at 2. So we did like a matinee instead of a 7.30 show yesterday. So yeah, it's been, you know, crazy, but the show's over now. So now we're just getting ready for spring and final exams and all that stuff end of term exams but let's get I'll talk more about that later but let's get into um guy Nader shout out so um Caleb son of Sally Jane of pink hair girl in podcast oh and hi to all of you who are new to the podcast um for those of you that are new I do a, um, a guy Nader shout out basically shouting out some of the guy Nader's out there um podcasters and other stuff um yeah so hi Caleb um Josh, who is sort of a knitter, who also has, um, like, as in sword of, like, what a knight has, and a, um, so yeah, he has his own podcast called, um, the Sword of a Knitter Podcast. Kenneth, who is the Turbo Knitter 64, and he also has his own podcast called the Turbo Knitters Podcast. Um, Terry, who owns Bags by Terry, um, on Etsy, and is T. Schmidt on Ravelry. Jared, who is Brooklyn Tweed on Ravelry, and... Most of you guys probably know him. He's a very famous blogger. Um, James, who is Dancing Geek. Darren, or and James also has his own podcast, Dancing Geek, the Dancing Geek podcast. Darren, who is DJ Knits a Lot More and who is co host of the Knitting in Circles podcast. Um, Dennis, who is Buzz Boy. John, who is Knit Boy One. Matthew, MK Bug 74. Dan, Obi-Wan Knitter, co-host of the Bakery Bears podcast. Hi, Dan. Um, John, who is Men Knit 2. Sean, who is co-host of the His and Hers podcast. Matt, who is Navy 1999 on Ravelry and is co-host of the Apple Blossom and You podcast. Mike, who is Mikey Jr. on Ravelry. Paul, who is Pauly81, and he has his own blog. Dave, who is co-host of the FO and I podcast. Um and is Dave Knits, Dave's Knits on Ravelry, and Knit Monkey on Instagram. Benjamin Crudwig, uh, and these two guys are new to the shout out, Benjamin Crudwig, um, who is Benjamin Crudwig on Ravelry, and I looked and I'm pretty sure he's Benjamin Crudwig on every, everything. And he has the Fibercast podcast, and he has a great podcast. And Navi, who is Navi Sama on Ravelry, and he's very multi-craftual. I think he covers almost all the yarn crafts and definitely other textile crafts, which is cool. Um, yeah, so today's going to be kind of a shorter episode because I have gotten knitting done, but it's been on like one project. And um, so I'll try to keep it quick because um, I want to also want to go and watch the Oscars. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the show. Um, let's get into whips. My first whip, which I'm not going to show you guys because there's no progress on it, is the Ray Tank by Teresa Chorsepa um, in my Bags by Terry bag, as you guys have seen. Um, I d it's made in the Taki Stacy Charles Flora Colorway 03. And um, the back and front are done. I just need to, um, or almost done, I need to finish the straps on the, on the back. And I need to um, pick up for the collar on the front. Um, actually, I think it's all the way around, just so it's not, like, all loose. Um, yeah, it's basically like a see-through black fingering black yarn with sequins in it. Yep, fingering black sequins. Those were all in the same sentence. Yes, they were. Yeah, I'm never knitting anything like this again. I just haven't had the time because it's also in a tangled mess. Plus, I want to finish. I do want to get it done. I'll get it done probably next weekend. Um, you guys probably won't see it fin, or you might see it finished next week. We'll see. But um, if you're interested, check it out on my Ravelry page. Um, I would not suggest knitting it just because of the yarn. It's a hard yarn to knit with, um, especially if you're, 
you know, not extremely good at counting and reading and marking your patterns, you can get in a real mess. Um, and the pattern isn't completely clear either. Like it's really a short pattern for what it is. So, um, but yeah, so let me talk about my other whip, which I've really been working on. I have a hoe, um, which is for my lollipop Blarney socks. Whoops. Um, I don't have sock, but I did get sock blockers today. And that's going to be in the faux section. Um, thank you um, to the woman that gave them to me. From now on, I'm not going to mention names unless um, I ask them. And I'm just, I don't have really time to ask people. So um, because I've been getting so many donations for my um, yarn club, I mean for my knitting club at school, and we'll talk more about that later. But um, I just don't want anybody who doesn't want to be recognized, you know, be recognized if they don't want to. But these are my lollipop socks made in the lollipop pop tradition base in the Blarney colorway. Pretty, pretty yarn. I'm still working on the lighting. Um, yeah. Um, it has, it's a three striper. I love this colorway. Um, and I just did my traditional gusset and heel. I'm, I think I want to give the OMG a try for the cow, spring into socks cow. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to give that a try. Um, yeah, um, it's for my brother, Colin. Um, I just cast it on the second, and I've been using my yarn it for that. Um, let me see. Sorry, guys. A little bit of a tangle mess. Here is the cast on. Sorry, it's a little bit tangled. Just cast it on, 64 stitches. Um, and the pattern that I'm using, as I always do, is the basic sock pattern by Ann Budd. But basically at this point I could knit a sock without needing that pattern. I just use it for the numbers. Um, and we'll talk about knitting socks later because I have a bunch of requests. So there's that. Um, oh, and let me show you the tag from Lollipop. Because um, I love how she labels all the stripes. The only thing that I wish she did was that she labeled them, but then she told you which color is which. Because, like, for this, there's two greens. It's so, like you can't really tell, like, which green is which as she's labeled it. So it's kind of hard. Um, but here's the Lollipop. There you go. It's in the traditional base. I should have leftovers for this. Um, I need to get my swap stuff together because I'm in a swap with Homespun House podcast Molly and Minerva from the Minerva Turkey Knits. She's doing a barn raising square. Cal, I'm in that. And I'm also in um, my, like a favorite thing swap. Thing is, I just don't have many scraps and I like to like trade. Um, I actually just got here. I'll pull it over for you guys while I'm on a tangent. Oh. I just got this wonderful bag of scraps from somebody who sent these to me, but I, I don't think I got a name. I might have it written down somewhere, but um, thank you for whoever sent this. I really appreciate it, because um, this will help me also with swaps, because I just don't have a lot of sock yarn scraps yet. Because I think this is like my third finished socks, and I have like another one that's just sitting, waiting to be knit on, and so, like... I can do it like in my sleep, like I know how the construction works, like I really don't need the pattern now, but I just don't have enough scraps. Um, so there's that. Um, that's it for the whips. Um, for foes, very exciting. I have a foe. My Patton's Croy socks. And thank you also, I do not want to mention their name, but thank you for the person who donated these sock blockers. I really appreciate it. Um, they fit well. They just don't work extremely well with like the gusseted heel. But I, I, I think I'm going to stop doing this. Um, even though it's sturdy. And this is a very sturdy yarn. But this is also like. This is a nice because it's more of like a sport heavy fingering. So if you're somebody that's new to sock knitting. Perfect yarn. And do not buy it from the Patents Quarry website. If you're a beginner sock knitter and you want something cheap. This is a good yarn, but do not buy it from the Patton's Croy because it's $7.50 a ball and their shipping is ridiculous. Same with Joann's. Never buy online from Joann's. Always go to your store because Joann's has ridiculous shipping. 
I've never bought anything. I've been like had it in my cart ready to go and then I realized how expensive the shipping was and it was just stupid. So there's my tip. Um, go to the Patents Croy yarn and just go to Will Trader Sell on Rav and like people have two balls. I, I bought another two balls of these to make another pair sometime and they, it was only like $10 for the two with shipping and like for from the Patents Croy it would cost me $20. So definitely more worth it to just buy it from either go to the craft store because it doesn't cost seven fifty at the craft store or buy it on Rav. Um, yeah. So there's those. Um, oh, and let me talk more about these. These are made in the Patton's Croy Socks yarn um, in the Rags Shades. Um, Patton's Croy Socks Rag Shades. That's the name of the yarn in the colorway Blue Striped Rag. And I already wore these. They're great. I love them. Um, I'm still getting the sizing right. Like I, like I, one of these is n like more fitting than the other, but I feel like I'll get my cast on number. Like I know, okay, seven stitches per inch, this cast on for me. And it's hard because I'm starting, I, I have a lot of kids. I'll talk more about this later, but I have a bunch of kids. Um, actually, you know, I'll just talk about it now. So, um, I'll talk about it now. So, um, I was knitting, like that's how I got this hoe done. I wouldn't have been able to get it done if I wasn't knitting in the dressing room. So I knit a lot in the dressing room um, and the sock and people would always ask me, what's that, what's that, what's that? And then I would, you know, and then kids were like, oh, well you have to make me, <laughs> you have to make me a pair, you know, you have to, which I'm fine with. Like I, some people are like, no, I knit for myself. Like I rarely knit for myself. Like with these socks, the only reason why I made them for myself was because that I did not like want to give somebody a messed up pair of socks. And that's what's hard is like, you know, it's kind of awkward to like measure a guy's foot in like the dressing room, you know? So like, and I just asked him for a shoe size and I know, um, oh, the Yarn Craft Council, I'll link it. Um, the Yarn Craft Council has a really good PDF document that basically has like average head, like average head, foot, all these sizes. So like if the kid says I'm a size 12, then I can go through and say, okay, size 12, foot circumference, foot length, like it gives me like this, the things for a sock knitter, not just like a chart that's like US foot sizes and foot length. It also gives me circumference, how tall the cuff should be. So I would suggest it. Um, I'll link it. It's a great PDF. It's free. Um, and if you're ever somebody who like wants to knit for somebody, but also doesn't want to like measure them or doesn't have a measuring tape on them, it's the perfect thing. Um, yeah. So there's that, which is exciting. Um, and thank you again for the sock blockers. Thank you for the person who gave me the sock blockers. I really appreciate it. I got a lot of packages today. And that will bring me right into um, Stash Enhancement. So um, I got a bunch. Like I think one day I had like five packages in one day um, of yarn donations. And I really, truly appreciate it. And, you know, just because, and I'll talk, I had my first meeting this Thursday. And we'll talk more about that later. But, um. The kids really appreciated it. Like, they liked being able to choose their own color and, like, being able to choose the yarn that they wanted. Because, like, for me to just give them a ball of yarn, I just don't think that they would like it. Um, yeah. But I really do appreciate it. For everybody that has donated, I have, I got some really, like, not store brand stuff. I got some really nice stuff from people. And I, all the kids really, truly appreciate it. And they all really, truly appreciate it. And um, we will talk more about it um, later. But um, so upcoming, um, so that was my stash enhancement. Um, I did not buy anything that I can remember. <laughs> not good. Um, it is Lent, so I'm done with buying yarn. Like before I was on a yarn diet, this is like now it's Lent and now it's done. Because Sunday is the Sabbath, I am going to order, which is basically what Sunday is basically Sunday's like a break from your commitments. So like, let's say I'm giving up coffee. I know a girl whose mom is giving up coffee. And she says it's like a mess in the morning, but she says she gives up coffee, but on Sundays she has coffee. Like it's basically just like a little celebration, a little, a little Sabbath to get you through. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm also trying not to snack in between meals. Those are my two big ones. Um, and then, you know, the traditional fish on Fridays. That's a Catholic thing, but I won't get into religion. Anyway, um, upcoming, sweater. Sweater, sweater, sweater. That is happening this week. Now that the play is over, I do have tryouts for both crew and the w spring play. Um, I'm going to be doing either, but I'm 
probably be going to be doing crew for the spring and then heading more in the direction of plays in the coming years. Um, but because I'm going to have a little more free time, um, I'm going to just get, I want to get that sweater on the needles and I'm changing it. I was going to do mom, stop. Just say no. Sorry guys. That was my mom. Um, she says hi. <laughs> anyway, um, basically, um, I was going to do The Fort by Jared Flood, and I'd much rather do it in the... Do I have it here? I'd much rather do it in, like, a this colorway of the Harrisville Designs, um... Oh, sorry. Harrisville Designs water sh or Watershed Yarn. Um, I'd much, I'd much rather do it in, like, a tweed, because I feel like I'm gonna knit that sweater once and not want to do it again, because it's all checkerboard, and I just... I'm gonna want to knit it once and then be done with it um so there's that um there is the um so yeah that's basically it for upcoming sorry this is really short this week I just I don't have a lot it's been crazy so um uh we had so knitting club update we had our first meeting and I kind of overestimated what I wanted to do, but um, we got to the cast on, so everybody's on the same point of cast on. Um, hopefully I don't get too many kids who are joining us for the first time. I think I'm going to start by learning to knit and then move to um, like casting on with the other kids and helping them along individually, um, but that was good. I had about 15 or 16 kids, which I think is like a good number. 15 or 16, I think is a really good, and that's really capacity for teaching in a group. Teaching individually, like I, I feel like from now on, some kids want to learn to sew, some want to do whatever. So I'm going to let them do it, do whatever they want to do, um, make it more relaxed. Um, and I'm changing up my plans. I don't think we'll be able to accomplish Rhinebeck. I think I want to do Maryland next May. Um, I think that seems more accomplishable. Just, I'm looking and, you know, I would like to do an overnight with them where we would drive up, like, especially for Maryland, like, drive up Friday after classes on a no-class Saturday. Hopefully, Maryland is no-class Saturday. If not, we'll drive up Saturday and then probably go all day Sunday and then come back Sunday evening. But for them to stay over, plus for me to get a bus, plus for me, I want to get some spending money for each of them, um... It's not cheap. It's like, so, we'll just have to see. Um, what else about the knitting club? Um, we're going to start sewing. I have a couple needle pointers. I have my, um, my faculty advisor. She scratched her cornea Thursday morning, so she wasn't able to make it to the first meeting, but I think she'll get some of the kids' needle felting as well. Um... Yeah, so there's that. I think everything everything is going really well. Um, I planted, uh, and I can show you what I kits I put together. But basically, I um, at f I wanted to do circular, but now I'm just doing a garter stitch flat knitted hat, and we're gonna sew it up because it's just easier for cast on. Like, cause otherwise they would have had to cast on a hundred stitches in comparison to the 64 and then having them not twist. I'd much rather just work on the flat now. Supposedly a lot of them, a couple of them have been like knitting after and learning, which is great. So I won't have to have too many to teach knitting. And I think knitting like after, cause I started them on the long tail cast on and that was hard. Like it's not easy. And I think after the long tail cast on, I think they'll be fine with the knitting. Um, so let me show you. I put together like little kits for them. Ugh, the lighting. I put together little kits and you can see the number that I wrote in Sharpie. So I put a number on each of the kits and then basically have them sign it out. Um, and then I put a yarn in. This is a Cascade 220 that somebody donated very generously. Um, and then I also put in a circular needle as many as I could, if not straight. Um, that was also the other problem, is I didn't have enough needles. And so I had to do straight. And so it was just easier for us to all do flat because I didn't have enough circulars. And I paid, I decided to buy circulars because I just, 
you know, circulars are a hard thing to get from people because, you know, you, you, buy, you like, even though, like, you know, you, you buy one pair and you think, oh, that's going to be it. No, you usually end up buying two or three or four, but they get lost. They're on projects. Like, they're never usually, like, needles that people just want to give up. I also put in, so I also put in two stitch markers, and then I put in a couple things. Um, the pattern that I use, this is a Lion Brand free pattern that I'm using. This is the flat knit hat. Um, what is it called? First fall knit hat. So there's that. Um, then I made a checklist so I didn't forget anything um, in each of the kits. And then I also put some pictures of knitting on here from Interweave. Um, it was on their website. Um, and those those are really good pictures. What else did I put in here? A circular hat pattern, which we might get to later. Um, and a, another knitting tutorial. So I want to give them visual because I feel like some of them are definitely visual learners and some of them could just like sit down with the pictures and learn. And they, didn't, they wouldn't have to have me help. Um, I think the biggest problem with the whole knitting is going to be threading the yarn, like getting the tension. So there's that. Um, I also bought them um, on Amazon, these tape measures, and I'm going to have to have them pay me like five, six bucks per kit. Which I didn't really want to have to do, but I had to do what I had to do. I cannot just take the cost for like 15 pairs of circular needles and the tape measures and sewing materials. I just, I can't take that um, money. Which, you know what? I'll go with it. Um, so there's that. Um, I bought two sets of those. If you're ever in need of like a lot of tape measures. I these were there are twelve in here, and these were six dollars, and they were prime, which was nice. So I was able to get them in time. Um, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else for all you photography people out here, out there? This is my lens mug, so it's has the indentations like a lens, and I'm also just drinking water. Um, is there anything else? So, there's that. Now let me talk about the cow. So we're, the spring into socks cow. Um, post in the chatter, in the chatter thread, chat it up. Um, you know, just post what yarn needles you're planning on using. And next week I will have, um, all of my, um, Next week, I'll have all of the prizes put together, because next week, I'll be much more relaxed. I won't have anything to do on Sunday, because this is my last week. So my school is set up in trimesters, so fall, winter, and spring term. So I'm coming to the end of the winter term. So I have this week. Then I have um, the weekend. And then I have my final exams, which are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, three exams. Um, they're not final exams, they're end of term exams. Um, but, so there's those. And then after that, I'm on spring break. So I think it's from March 5th on, I'm on spring break through the 20th, I think I go back Monday the 23rd, whatever that Monday is, Monday 23rd, 24th of March. So I get most of the month of March off, which is nice. So you guys will see a lot more of me in March. I think I might even do like more than one episode a week. I'll get a lot more knitting done. It'll be nice. And I... I like to get a lot more dyeing done. Um, I, my dream is to open an Etsy shop and for me to be able to make money to, you know, make money to get, you know, make money to, you know, be able to buy yarn. And, you know, especially as with this club, you know, I would love, love to be able to sell yarn and then be able to like, you know, take like, have certain yarns that where the proceeds go towards the club. Because, you know, donations are great. I love the donations. The donations were great. But the problem is, is, you know, you're not going to donate your whole stash. You know what I mean? And it's like, so generous, all of you. But the problem is, is, you know, I really want the kids to get like a luxury experience. And I think it would even be better if they were able to choose their own yarn. If they were able to go online or go to the yarn shop. I think that's what I want to do as my end of year trip is just res reserve a bus with the school and take them down to my yarn shop. Um, well, yeah, probably an after school thing. I'm thinking like a Thursday. Um, we'd leave it around like seven and go for knit night on Thursday. I think that would make sense. Anyway, um, 
you know, for them for them to be able to choose their own yarn and say, I know exactly what I want to make with this, and I love this color, I love this yarn, I chose it. So that's my dream is to open an Etsy shop. Um, so I'm gonna ha start having a question of the week. I've had a question of the week basically for all these podcasts. Um, you know, like just a question. But my two questions are. Are there any good self-striping tutorials that you guys know are out there? Because I really want to try it, but I've been kind of confused with the whole warping board thing. And so if, the, if any dyers out there, if you could just explain to me what that is. Or give me a brief explanation of how you do self-striping. Or other techniques that you guys think are great. Second, bag making. Is, are, is there a good wedge bag making tutorial out there? Because I would really, by summertime, I would really love to open an Etsy shop. Like, that would be my dream. Let me know. Would Here's the question. Would you guys buy, I but I want it to be high quality, but also not too expensive. Would you guys buy yarn like the skein I showed you from me? Would you be interested in that? You know, I definitely have to try dyeing more. I definitely have to try bag making more, but I would like to give it a try. So let me know about that. Um, yeah, it's kind of already gone into the blabber section. The weather is mm, it snowed yesterday, starting in round one. So our play was canceled, which was kind of a good thing because we also sort of needed vocal rest. Um, we had a lot of kids that weren't doing really well. Um, it's been cold, it's, you know, and it warmed up today, so all the snow melted, now it's going to freeze over, so we'll see how school, getting to school tomorrow is. School's good, school is school, you know, I'm trying to stay on top of everything, so coming into the spring break, I'm coming into the end, which is good, um, but crazy. Hairspray, hairspray went so well, um, when I get the DVD, I'll put in a couple, um, I'll put in a couple video links. But our cast did such a wonderful job. They did a really, really good job of, it, you know, people were telling me it's like Broadway, and I really thought it too. Um, I was Mr. Spritzer. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, you saw the knitting that I was, I was doing on that sock um, and my green pants. <laughs> and I'll show you guys my entire outfit. But it was basically a green suit with a pink shirt and like this brown striped bow tie. I loved it. It was so comfortable too um and then i had this hair and i had to put on makeup and everything but it, it went really well i was really proud of what we did and um yeah i'm excited for spring spring is almost here come on spring you're almost there um coming to the home stretch winter you know it's been a, it's been a rough winter between the snow in new jersey it hasn't been that bad i feel very very bad for um all of the Massachusetts people out there. And I'll throw in a picture at the end of, so um, this camp that I go to, so that's um, another thing um, I'll talk about in another episode. But over the summer, there will, from basically end of June to early August, there will not be any episodes. There will be some blog posts, but no episodes. And we'll talk about that later in another episode. But anyway, this camp that I go to, the the man who runs the nature program um he sent me an email and he's a geologist and basically so what geologists a big thing that geologists do is they will look at a rock face and be able to tell when each piece of rock was created so in certain eras so he gave sent um a couple of us a picture of this snow bank from um New England, and it basically had like the very bottom where like the snow, and it, like it had all the dates and everything it was really interesting, and I'll put it all in there. Um, but that was like one thing that um, I guess his class did or he did or something like that. But um, yeah, spring is almost here. Coming into the home stretch. Um, can't believe there's really only like after this month, there's really only like two months left. It's crazy. Um, Kind of bittersweet, but I've had a good freshman year. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you again to all of you who donated. Um, I should have all the prizes put together for the cow, so you guys can see what prizes. We have some bags, some yarn. Um, what else? 
I think that's it. Oh, and I think we're going to have some stitch markers, and I'll throw a little something in there, too. I'm not sure what it is yet, but something from Princeton. Um, would you guys be interested in coffee or a drink, a hot drink prize? I think I might do, like, a hot drink prize. Either you, you get to choose tea or coffee, but, um, yeah. So, I hope you guys have a good week. Um, thanks, and make sure to check out the blog. Um, join the group. Or um, pretty chatty. Um, and let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Just let me know. You know, I love to hear from you guys. Um, it always warms my heart to hear that you guys love the podcast. It really does. Because, especially with going to school a lot, I don't get to be around my knitting community, or at least my local knitting community as often. And so Ravelry is a great, and this whole podcast is a great outlet for me. So thank you for all of you for watching hope you all come back next week i'm sorry that was a little more blabbery and i i promise there will be a, some more knitting hopefully that tank top will be finished sweater casted on um and maybe even another pair of socks on the needles um yeah so hope you guys have a wonderful week have a very knit filled um time um and yeah so Keep the knitting going. Happy knitting. And, um, see you guys. Uh, what was I going to say? I always say something at the very end. Blah. Wait, what was I going to say? Hold on. Hold on. Wait, stay with me. Uh, bye annually.